Marilyn Wilson here, um, uh, co-founder and president of uh, RE Technology. I'm so excited about our session today. We've got two really wonderful, really great people, but more importantly, in this context, even really, really smart about how to make their business strong. I was just hearing right before we started that both of these companies are killing it right now and, and hopefully will continue to do for the rest of the year and beyond. So let me introduce our players. We've got Brad Nix. He's the co-founder and COO of Path and Post Real Estate from North Atlanta. And then we've got Greg Delaire, who's the broker owner from Delaire Realty out of Green Bay. If you can, if football fans will see his green and gold in the back there and understand that he's pretty serious about where he lives. Uh, I was just telling them before I started that my daughter just started at Syracuse um, and she's going to be a dance dancer that'll be on the sidelines if in fact we ever can see live football. But their first game for the ACC is this Saturday, so let's hope that it all goes well. And we, we do have a season, right? We're all looking for college football for sure. Anyway, um, just for everybody that's attending today, uh, if you have any questions, we love it when you ask questions because we really want you to get exactly what you want out of this. If you go over to the, uh, the right-hand side, you'll see that little, the little control panel. There's a the section called questions with a great triangle. If you just click on that great triangle, open it up, then you can ask our audience or myself anything that um, that is going to help you better understand what they do. So feel free to do that, and we'll jump in with questions, right, your questions, uh, whenever it makes sense. So with that, I want to turn this over to Brad and Greg. They've got some really good stuff for you. Now, I assume everyone that's on this call either has a CRM, is thinking about getting a CRM, or doesn't even know what the word CRM means. <laughs> <laughs> which is sometimes we get a little buzz, buzzwordy in real estate. So we want to make sure everybody understands what it means, but they both have had tremendous success basically tr creating what, you know, going back to our, our athlete things here for a minute, the best sales athletes are the people that have sales discipline, right? And the best way to have sales discipline, frankly, the only way to truly be successful as a salesperson in any industry, not just real estate is to have a system that not only um, provides you with marketing opportunities, but importantly kind of keeps you on track, right? Keeps you on task to say, this is what I need to do today. These are the people that are gonna be worth my time because we all know there's never enough time in the day. And these two guys have kind of figured it out and their brokerages have figured it out. So we wanted to share their perspective with you because they've got, you'll see some really, really good practical, actionable advice about the best ways to really make your business strong. So. Title today, five ways your CRM can make you more money. Isn't that what we're all looking for as a way to help ourselves make more money? So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Brad and Greg. Um, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask because they're a great resource of um, really smart, successful people that can help you. So with that, Brad, I'll turn it over to you. So take it away, guys. Hey, thanks, Marilyn. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, happy to be here um, and happy to be alongside my friend, uh, GBG. Uh, good to see you today, Greg. Yeah, likewise. And, yeah, um, I, I guess I want to start by saying, like, um, what is a CRM to me, um, and, and you too, Greg? Um, to me, it's it's basically our system of record. Um, you know, if, if it's where we keep all of our contacts, um, all of our clients, all of the leads, all of the behavior around that, it's also a place where we track all of the the agent productivity. Um, whether you're a solo shop or a team or a brokerage, you need a place to track all of those things I just listed. And our CRM is that for us. And I assume it functions much the same way for you, Greg. Yeah, it's really our foundation. We took it really seriously. We launched our company in 2011 and we've always been using technology. I'm very similar to Brad. We both come from technology backgrounds. It's always been something that we're um, uh, trying to be on the cutting edge and improve and learn and become better. It's, you know, the second we think we have this figured out is the second we, we we're behind. So we're constantly students of the industry and especially CRMs, you know, and, you know, for, for us, it, it is really the foundation of Delaire Realty. Um, it's helped us become one of the most per agent productivity in the nation. So, um, but it all comes down to what Brad was saying. It's systematic and also accountability. So we'll be covering a lot of those things and giving some really key takeaways um, and excited to be with everyone today. Yeah, just to go over some of the talking points we came up with, we're gonna, you know, the CRM, a good CRM is gonna help you convert more business, whether that's 
uh, new leads or old leads or past business, whatever it may be. It's going to help you convert more business. It's going to help you deliver a higher level of service standard to each uh, client that you do work with. It's going to also do some work for you and surface opportunities. It's going to create a blueprint for how you can you know, repeat the process, as Marilyn was saying, you know, say that discipline. Um, and then you know, it's going to create productive and happy agents, whether that's you yourself or your team, your teammates, and how that would be. So we're going to work through these five points and you know, feel free to ask questions and interrupt us at any time. I think Marilyn will, will you know, raise her hand or, or let us know when you have one. So let's start by um, enabling conversion and kind of that past and present and you know, what, what's a good sign of a CRM to, to know it's doing that kind of stuff. Um, let's start in the past, Greg. So you, you've got some leads in your database, you're, you're working your CRM as, as you would. Um, what kind of ways would you use a CRM to you know, get your past contacts that are in there to, to do more business with you? Yeah, so one of the things that we really strive is making sure that we stay in touch with our sphere of influence, but also like really providing valuable information to them, not some recipe card or sending them some stuff in the mail that they may not necessarily want. And so trying to find opportunities for values, we've got the check mark where it talks about e-alerts. In our CRM system, we can actually send um, our sphere of influence or people are past clients, we can send them what's called a seller alert which basically notifies them of all of the homes that are active, under contract, and pending in relation to their homes. So when you spend time nurturing your database and knowing your past client or somebody, we call it adopting our clients, sometimes somebody that's in your sphere of influence who maybe used a realtor, a different realtor at a time, they're not necessarily sending them valuable information. Um, yeah, and Greg, I have a question about that. Actually, it just came in. Um, and you know we, we've all been talking a lot through COVID and there's been a million webinars talking about um, what to do and how to do it and I almost feel like we've had like V1, V2, V3 of COVID it just keeps changing and we keep thinking we're coming out of it and then we don't and then we go back in and we come back out so if this sort of whatever we call this I'd sort of say like V3 of COVID what what does your language look like? Is it at first I thought it was you know I've heard a lot of agents and brokers say it was very sensitive, very calm, very quieting. Like what can we do to help you? Now the market has gone kind of crazy. So how has your communication method or voice changed through those different stages of COVID that we've been living through? For us, it's more of just staying consistent. You know, follows following CDC guidelines and being. Um, consistent in our messaging to potentially people who we're meeting with on the seller side or potentially people um, we're meeting in from a from a showing standpoint curious to see what Brad's thoughts are on that too okay yeah it, it's definitely I think early on one of the focus we had um, when COVID first hit was there was never a better time or a better opportunity for you to reach out to someone in your existing CRM um, and just let them know hey I'm here um, if you have any questions, uh, how are things going in your world? How, how has COVID impacted your life? And just being there as someone who cares. You, you don't even have to ask them about real estate. In fact, you right. shouldn't. And, and we took that direction really early on with our team. It's like, don't call and ask about real estate. Just call and ask how they're doing as a human. You know, how's their family? Just you know, checking in on you guys. And we did a lot of that early on. Um, uh, our CRM enabled us to not only you know, know who to call and have their contact information, but to log that activity so that when we did follow up as you know, the second phase or the third phase, a wave came through and time went by, we had a contextual follow up because we had a place to log those notes in our CRM. So when we call up later, it wasn't, you know, I know you said last time that you weren't sure if you're going to be able to keep your job. You may be furloughed. Just want to check in and see the status of that furlough situation. And you're talking about someone's life, which is way more valuable than talking about a real estate transaction. So we did yeah. our evolution through that and just let the conversation dictate the follow-up. And so we we would set you know a to do in the in the CRM to tell us when to follow up. It's like all right, I know they're gonna you know think about doing something, um, whether it be job related or real estate related or just life related. You know they're they're worried about going back to school, so we'd set a follow up. Hey. Did you make a decision about going in person or virtual? Just want to know how it worked out for your family. So you're there in the context of someone else's life versus trying to make a sale. So, so that's you're how just we... kind of in there. Yeah, you know, you're in their conversation. So when it, it naturally comes to, hey, I can't deal with this two-bedroom house anymore. My kids are driving me crazy because they're all home. 
that it, you, it becomes more natural. It's not like a pitch anymore. It's just part of servicing their needs. It's really simple for us. We always go through a, a three-step process. You, people got to know who you are. They got to know your name and your reputation. Um, they've got to like you as a person um, and you know, make sure you're compatible before they'll ever trust you. So we just work no like trust. And, and these are great opportunities through these tough times in life to, to develop that trust phase. We're like, hey, that guy's nice. He checks in on me. He's friendly. He really cares. I may trust them with one of my biggest financial decisions of my life. And we just keep working that system through our CRM over and over again. Gotcha. So the CRM isn't just pitch, 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 buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. It's relationship. That's what the R stands for, relationship management, right? Gotcha. Okay. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and going through this checklist, like, yeah, you wanted to do the smart um, alerts, like uh, Greg was saying. Um, we do very similar things on our team. We also will use our CRM for some bulk communication. Um, that's that's one of those Spider-Man talks I give. Like when you have that kind of power in a CRM, you've got to take a lot of responsibility and how to use it wisely and, and not come across, um, you know, spammy. Uh, so we try to limit the bulk communication. It's a great um, effective tool when used properly, but you've got to really be able to segment well. you got to make sure that your CRM is intelligent enough to do some smart filtering or segmenting so that when you do reach out in bulk, you're reaching the very specific audience with a very specific message. So um, that segmenting is a really interesting uh, thought too. Um, how much does Boomtown help you guys with figuring out what that means? Because that's kind of a marketing word. Some people don't know what you mean by that. Do they help you with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Boomtown's been a great partner in general. They have a lot of wonderful training um, and they have you know, some success uh, coaches that you can get with if you need additional uh, conversations to kind of dig in. But the online training is amazing to talk through how to segment using the CRM. And uh, it'll teach you really quickly you know, how to filter based on time on site or time since registration or uh, you know anything like search criteria specifically so you can get pretty finite in what you're you know reaching out to from a crm standpoint so peter just asked a question is there an ideal um sort of sphere of influence size from your perspective and he, I, I think you answered the he said should it be segmented i think you already just answered yes it should be but do you have any guidance for that that you tell your agents on how many people they should be trying to nurturing at any one time yeah, so I view sphere of influence and, and nurturing leads a little bit differently. I'd like to hear uh, Greg's thoughts on that. So I think your sphere of influence is always growing and, and always increasing. Um, I don't think there's ever too many contacts to have in your database from that standpoint. Um, you do want to you know, make sure that the records are accurate. I mean, it's a good phone number, good email, so you can reach out to them. Good you know, first, last name kind of stuff. So just make sure you got a good, accurate database from a sphere standpoint. You want that to continue growing. But that doesn't mean they're actually ready to buy. Um, I view sphere of influence as just a contact versus someone who comes from being a contact into, you know, thinking about moving. And in that phase, they, they start need to be nurturing. And, and so I'm not always nurturing my sphere the same way I'm nurturing leads who are in the transaction phase. Um, gotcha. I'm always in touch with my sphere. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. constantly running a, a drip plan, which is on our screen here, um, to keep in touch. And so our, our keep in touch plans are very different from our nurture plans. So I'm keeping gotcha. in touch with a, with a segmented sphere who I know are not ready to buy or sell now because mm -hmm. I, they're in my sphere and I know who they are. They're just not ready now, but I do want to keep in touch with them. I do want to stay top of mind. I want to send them relevant content from time to time, but I'm not nurturing them as like teaching them how the how the market is uh, today versus two weeks ago where they're in an active buy cycle or a sell cycle for that matter. So it's a little bit different in how I reach out to them. And that's another great thing about having a good CRM. So you can build a customized drip per audience, per that segment, whether you're nurturing them through a funnel or you're just keeping in touch with them. And like, a, you know, I, we reference some of that as like a pawn, like where you're just kind of keeping in touch with them and you know, put them into the funnel when, when they're ready to transact. Got it. Okay. How, how do you work that? Greg? Yeah. Well, we like we're we have a new agent coming on and he's working on his initial list of sphere people and we are really um, kind of supportive and you know we really need the names and we will help you find the information and help them build their you know everyone you know who's going to get married typically has like 200 to 250 people is like the number yep. and I really like to even break that down to like 
the first hundred. I want our new agents to focus on a hundred people that like you, know you, trust you, that if you called up and invited them to, for a cup of coffee, they would want to go meet with you. And really helping them build and, and showing the importance of building a database or data bank. These are opportunities. This is not something you just go and sell. I'm not saying you need to get a hundred people that you're just going to go out and be like the Northwest Mutual person who just wants, who do you know that wants to buy or sell? It's not what I'm saying. Um, but we do help and coach our team on providing value to these people, trying to reintroduce ourselves before we send anything electronic to them, you know, mm -hmm. trying to provide value to them, you know, reintroduce them to a mixer before we start adopting them as people that we want to provide value to in the real estate space. But we do eventually want to transition to providing quality information that's relevant to them. That is like a just a big sticking point for us. I do never want to spam somebody. I don't want to send them anything. Um, we'll be talking later about some events and the ways to provide value to um, our clients in in uh, further in this presentation today too. I love that word data bank as opposed to database. Th doesn't that seem a lot more powerful? A data bank, like that's where money comes from. <laughs> it comes from my data bank. Very interesting way to look at it. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. We start our year. Our data bank's grown so big at this point. We talk to every one of our agents that the the nurture cycle for someone who's thinking about buying a home. You know, they start dreaming. It's you know, it's eight to twelve months now um, for for most typical buyers. And so we'll start our new year um, with over fifty percent of our business already in our data bank, so to speak. So wow. so many agents in, in real estate industry are constantly thinking about new leads coming in and where am I going to get the next lead generation from? How am I going to get the next opportunity? Um, but the best agents I've found realize they already have to have half their business in their data bank when they start the year. So mm -hmm. they don't have to like go from zero to 100. They're only going from like 55 to 100 during that year. So it's just a, a totally better position to run your business from when you have a fully functional CRM behind you. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we started in Boomtown in 2014, and it's just been kind of a, a pretty rapid incline in business. And obviously, both of our teams have grown over time. But the one thing that Boomtown or any great CRM platform does is it truly helps you build that data bank. And it takes time. You know, we've got six years of past history. I just signed a listing yesterday from somebody that I met with in 2017. But they've been in our nurture loop. They've been getting valuable information from us. A lot of it is automated but initially when we set it up we do we spend the time to make sure it's quality information they're getting um but there's so many opportunities the average the, the boomtown system tells you if when you're in there that the average lifetime of a lead coming into the system and the average to go to closing for us was like 389 days so we knew that this process was going to take over a year and kind of developed everything that we do to make sure we're providing value we don't really smother them so much on the front end we want to build that rapport so that we get them six to 12 months. And I know Brad's like, uh, he preaches that all day long. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the last bullet on here is that dynamic re remarketing, which which helps you do that in a more relevant way, basically. So everybody knows that, you know, home buyers save a search and they get emails, right? Or they get app alerts. And, and another way to tap into that is, is to remarket uh, to a, an existing database who's been searching for homes on your site, whether it was six months ago or six weeks ago or, sometimes six years ago, you can target them um, with homes that match their search criteria. So it's completely relevant and you run ads to them in Facebook as the example here on the screen and you know, where you're targeting them, basically putting their preferred home search in front of them in the social media channel of their choice. Yeah, and it, Facebook. it just drives the behavior back to your site. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, you know, the, the key to the game, in my opinion, is getting that mind share and you know they used to say traditionally it was eight to 12 contacts to make a sale the way that the world is changing we're talking 20 to 30 contacts wow. and a lot of the contacts in this branding that builds mind share with a customer which mind share usually correlates to trust at some point right and the great thing about boomtown is the ability for the system to automatically show them relevant properties in the facebook feed not the ones they've seen, but the ones that would be a fit based on what they searched. And that's all in real time. That's something that's working for you behind the scenes. And as far as a, a cost basis for that, it's probably one of the most reasonable ways to market yourself. 
you know, the big success for our company, we've been aligned with Facebook. And when Boomtown came out with this dynamic retargeting, I was so, so excited because the power, not only are you in your email box, their email box, you're on their Instagram feed, you're in their Facebook, but it's, it's not necessarily about all at one time. If we know that the journey is like a 300 day cycle, it's for them to keep seeing you and staying relevant because you understand people's attention spans these days are quite short. So we, yeah. we call that surround sound marketing. So you're kind of surrounding them in a variety of different places, hopefully with music that they like. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the key. It's gotta be relevant. Now you, you don't want to, you know, blast your picture in front of them everywhere because then you come off with this a cheesy real estate guy. Right. But you send them homes that are relevant to their interest and taste. And all of a sudden you're, you're relevant and useful match their music taste to your analogy yeah uh, you obviously want a, a crm that also does you know listing promotions whether it's a, a new listing or an open house or a just sold you, you want a crm that can you know handle that push that out and almost like in a push button fashion so when you're shopping for crms make sure you get that um, boomtown does that extremely well um, yeah so it's, it's click click to run an ad on facebook it's no more ads manager it's no more complex targeting you know thankfully the digital team over at boomtown and the system that they've created here really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it and it makes it so that you can be consistent the key to the the whole real estate game is consistency and the foundation of our crm that we've chosen allowed us to be consistent for years and we've seen growth year over year and you know a big part of that is that foundation of consistency there is no magic pill it's doing actions and consistently doing those actions and you will reap benefits. It's a process, not an event, right? Yeah. Uh, and one question on this, it, it, does this system also let you promote live virtual open houses since that's a, a new format that seems to be merging in lots of markets now? Yeah, that's native on the site now um, for Boomtown. So it, it's great. Um, I think I even have a slide later on this okay. um, as well. I'll just, I'll click to it in a second, but yes. Um, all, more and more people are doing virtual showings for sure. Okay. Uh, Greg, you had mentioned a second ago about your um, your events, your kind of uh, client events. Um, talk us through a little bit of how you're using your CRM to to grow these and, and make them relevant. Yeah, so I have 10 agents on our team now, and a big part of what we do in our culture is accountability. And we've consistently done events for 11 years. Um, it started really small and it has kind of grown over time, but we use Boomtown for me, not only to invite my sphere of influence and my past clients, but for me to also be able to see that my team has also made the invitations, made the phone calls. We've really almost made it where it's a couple of clicks to load all of our past clients and sphere of influence into a dialer and be able to record a voicemail inviting them to our Santa photo day. You know, last year for our Santa photo day, we had 430 people um, register for that event. We had close to 500 people. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult in the COVID times, but you can see on May 18th, we actually did what's called a porch trip event, hmm. where we had one of the best photographers in Green Bay, Wisconsin, go and visit 135 people's homes. Now, that's an event that's pretty tough to run, but with this COVID stuff, you've got to be creative. And that was one of my agents, you know, we've we do um, a, a golf event, we do a movie event, we do a fall photo event. Um, and what we've realized over time is this is not a, a short-term strategy. This is a long-term staying relevant to our past clients, giving them something of value. When we invite them to an event, we are not plugging them for referrals. We are doing it out of the kindness of our heart and to stay relevant and provide value. Now our CRM, like I was saying, I can click a couple buttons and go to my past clients and I could email them all bulk. He had mentioned you gotta be very careful on the bulk stuff, but an example where I would bulk something would be like the actual email invitation to this event. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's people that talk about touching somebody 33 times in a year. I used to think that was like so outrageous, but when we have an event, we call them. So that's one touch point. We typically email them and then we will also typically send a text message at some point, either as a reminder, so there's three touches there. And then we also invite them to the Facebook event, just as another community way to, to share it. But for me as a team leader, I can sit there and see that every single person, I remember there's a scenario where we had a dog park event 
and we had like 50 people show up. We usually have a couple hundred. And I just, in, in one of our team meetings, I was like, nobody took it seriously. We invested, you know, $3,200 as a company to have this food trucks and have this big event. And we kind of all dropped the ball. The next event, we had the record of having over 400 people to it. So, but it's it's part of a long-term strategy for us. Um, and it's it's worked and people um, are very thankful for the opportunities. A lot of times it's, the, it's one of the reasons these people get out of the house, sadly, you know, it's almost like a, a way to bring people together, which we're all about that community. Yeah, that's great. We've done, uh, just speaking about the, you know, the COVID change this year, uh, we do a lot of events too, but um, we, we started celebrating uh, kind of, we call them trailblazers to match our path and post brand, but basically they're just community um, leaders or influencers or just people who are making a difference in the local community. We'll pick one a month that's kind of nominated inside of our team. And then we basically interview them, take their photograph, put it on our blog and um, you know promote them on social media as a way to kind of do events virtually and celebrate someone who's doing a good job. Um, you know, whether it's you know someone who's right now, well, next month I already know what's going to happen is, is someone who's celebrating the teachers and the school system who are having to work extra hard, and they've created this little private um, Facebook group to you know celebrate and and really just give positive vibes to the the you know, education community, and they've got over mm -hmm. thirty thousand people in that local Facebook wow. group over the last you know wow. two or three weeks. So the person who started that is going to be our local trailblazer of the month for having the idea, rallying the community around to, you know, give positive vibes to these educators who are going through a tough time right now. So we'll do that and then we'll spread that and, you know, post it in that group and have the domino effect of, of growing influence and, and contacts um, where Greg's got one here that's a great example of reaching out to your past. So I think you can use events in, in both ways, in, in different ways, even if they're virtual. So it sounds like it's just really tuning into what matters really what matters to you as a brokerage right what is it that that you believe is important to celebrate in your community or to support in your community or to uh like the you know the santa photo day i mean i guess there could be drive-through santa photo days now right there's ways to adapt it but peter had an yeah, observation he said and i think you guys are kind of getting to this he said you know there's so many different crms out there they're offered by my brokerage by my franchise by my mls like which one do i use it's so frustrating yeah so you know maybe just share with us your advice about you know what you looked for and why you found the one that you think you know what what is it about this one that ma that makes sense for the way you do business <clears throat> Yeah, for, for us, it was, you know, uh, the one we're going to talk about next is that level of service that it can offer as well. Um, so it's not just a place to track things um, and, and to keep us in line, which it does that phenomenally, but it's also a way to raise the standard in the community. Um, I've said it mostly, like, I feel like I'm in a partnership with this company of Boomtown um, versus every other piece of software that I've ever bought in the real estate industry feels like I bought something from a vendor or I'm on a subscription plan or something. Um, when, I, when I pay Boomtown, I feel like I'm paying a partner to help me improve my business. And I view their CRM and their team as part of my team, uh, very differently than being like a third party service provider. Um, and the difference is like, I think at the core, why they're in business is different than a lot of others is they really wanna make real estate agents more successful. And I think everything they put into place proves that. Uh, Greg may have a different view on that. For me, I mean, I knew every single tool that was out there and I still, you know, study and keep, you know, I want to be in the know on what, where the technology is changing. So I'm constantly looking. Um, in 2014, when we made the choice to, to move over to Boomtown, you know, I knew that Boomtown was like the Ferrari of CRMs. It was the premium car. And I had worked on websites and I had spent a lot of time in the later evenings when I should have been just spending time with my wife. I was, you know, creating things on my website, trying to, you know, get it to move up further up the search engines. But when I made the, the transitional mindset shift to purchase the Ferrari, and when I mean Ferrari, like the user interface, like you spend a lot of time, even me currently, even though I'm still a broker owner and I do a lot of training and coaching, I still sell real estate. I live, eat and breathe inside of the Boomtown CRM. And the user interface is, it's sexy. It's like a nice place to be. It's very simple too. So when you're training or if you have team members that you're thinking about adding into the system, this is a system that makes sense. Once it clicks and you have those little breakthroughs, 
um, for us from a training standpoint, adoption standpoint, and being able to, to track the success um, yeah. for was, was huge for us. And it, it was the best decision I made in 2014, you know, looking to now and we talk about our database and our data bank and the growth of that, but being able to be a part, a part, you know, to be able to call Brad Nix and mastermind or him to call me or any of our other Boomtown friends, it's like a family. It's like a community of some of the highest um, producing agents in the country. So. Yeah, I completely agree. The community is a huge part of it and, and the ability to customize it. I got a few slides that kind of show that like um, I want a CRM or website that I can truly customize and make it match my brand and deliver the level of service that I define, not just something some programmer decided to put into the system. So the flexibility and customization options were a big factor in my decision. Um, it, on screen, you see an example like we went through and built local community guides for every community we serve. Um, and we went a step further in that, not just did we build the community guides, but we built templates, you know, to match the community guides, whether it was at a neighborhood level or a city level. So when I say templates, it's an email template or a text template within the CRM. So it's one thing to have a, a community guide for the city of Woodstock. It's uh, on our website. It's another to have it one click away from sending you a customized email introducing you to the city guide at Woodstock. And that's what Boomtown allows us to do, is just build that one extra layer of customization that makes it push button easy to send to a lead while you're on the phone with them. You're like, hey, yeah, we've got a great um, drone video of that community. I'll send it to you right now. Click, click, done. You don't have to rewrite it from scratch every time. It's that templatization of how we'd want to deliver service that really makes for an amazing customer experience. So a question for you on that, Brad. Um, I, I think that's fascinating. And um, you know, I think sometimes where agents and brokers get stuck is like you guys seem to have a very, at least now, a very clear vision of what you want your communications to be about and when they get when they start and how often and what your website should do and how, mm -hmm. how it's support, right? You you kind of figured it out. You've got your program in place. That's right. For a broker that says rut route. I have no idea what I want to do. I have no idea how to differentiate my business. I have no idea what I should do. Again, does mm -hmm. Boomtown help you think through all that stuff? Because it's, you guys are expert and you're really good at it. I can tell that you get into this stuff. It's like you live it, right? All brokers sure. aren't like that. Some people just want to get out and talk to people, but they know this is important. So does it, you know, do they help you kind of think through how to do all that stuff? Yeah, they do. So the framework's there. So I'll, I'll click back a couple of slides and show you. So like our a guide page, for example, is native functionality in Boomtown. So by okay. default, you want to complete these guides because they're there when you sign up, right? It's like, oh, okay. they're curating which areas. You tell Boomtown, here are the areas I want to serve. So you know how rich and colorful you make them, that's a personalization choice. Um, but mm -hmm. by default, it's going to surface like the 490 listings or 293 listings in those community. The software just does that for you. So yeah, awesome. the framework is there, the training is there to support you, and then you get to customize it uh, to whatever degree you want, whether you're inserting videos or not. That's up to you, right? That's that's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, they give you the framework to say, here's the things I should do, and then you can get yes. started with sort of baseline, and then from there you can keep going. Okay, got exactly. it, Greg. The training, if you're a team leader, like the, you know, the training that they had in 2014 to 2020, 2020 like the evolution of that and the, the accountability that's built into that where you can see who on your team has completed which parts of the training. I mean, it's pretty impressive technology to like truly know where you stand and kind of like that gamification of like racing to get everyone fully trained and optimized. But the customer service, even for, for both I'm, what I've experienced, you know, over the course of the last six years has been extremely impressive, very responsive, and they want you to be successful. They know if you're successful, you grow these data banks over time, and that's the lifeblood of not only, it's the relationship together, and, and, and pairing us together with that is uh, super powerful, but they also have coaching, you know, where they actually have peer coaching. I'm actually one of the um, peer coaches for Boomtown, it's very reasonable awesome. where we help you, you know, we take some of the best drip campaigns, help you implement them, help coach, help train. And it's not a lifetime coaching thing. It's a, we coach you to get to the point where you can start running it on your own, you know, which is exciting. But even the success management team is so hands-on. They can do a lot of those things too. 
and they have they've like they've gotten really intelligent it's just a really smart company they're always trying to improve as well so they found a pathway that works to get people off the ground from maybe that don't have a lot of experience but the thing about when i go back to the user interface before it is very simple it seems overwhelming at first and it actually looks so simple but then there's like layers to it like an onion you know it's like you just keep digging into it but you can start at a very basic level and then you can advance and learn and learn and learn and then you know go to their their conferences which are some of my favorite times of the year boomtown unite charleston right on gotcha yeah okay Marilyn, here's a slide that you had asked about that virtual tour, you know, the mm -hmm. tour via video chat or tour in person. That's kind of a new thing since COVID hit this year. Um, Boomtown was quick to adapt, make sure that we are front and center and able to deliver showings however the buyer wants to go through them. You know, we just did some research actually in Houston as Wave Group, our other company, and found out for those that are are using them keep going and try to get as good at it as you can for those that have not tried them yet do not miss out this is a huge opportunity and frankly something i don't think is ever going to go away because you know, i've been talking to agents and you guys may have seen this so before if you had someone that was new to the process you may drive them to 30 houses right and spend hours and gas and time and now you can let them view 30 houses and then they can tell you the one or two or three they really want to see it saves everybody time and money and it, it gives you another marketing touch point back to your point greg right mm -hmm. absolutely and you can use boomtown because they've got the analytics on all of your user data to say who's a fit for this derby walk property it's as easy as typing in that address in the actual computer system and behind the scenes and it'll give you a list and then it'll actually score it based on um their likelihood of purchasing that property so you've wow. got a target audience where you don't instead of just blasting out i've i've coached teams where they will send out an open house invitation to everyone which is a huge mistake because you're actually turning off your audience mm -hmm. but boomtown quickly allows you to figure out who's actually a fit for that property so you could obviously link to the virtual open house try to get that user you know the live viewership up the more people that are on the live viewership attracts more viewers it's kind of a it's a mm -hmm. game and yep. well, it also makes your sellers feel like you're really doing something even when covid can limit other opportunities right absolutely yeah and by the way the research told us that people are willing to buy not all people but some people are willing to buy from a virtual open house these days which is very different than what it used to be right absolutely uh, i mean some people need to move um regardless of what's going on in the world pandemic or not they still need to move um for very meaningful reasons and you know they may not have a choice but to transact remotely um, whether it's travel restrictions or health restrictions. So I, I, it's going to become more and more common moving forward. I agree with you, Marilyn. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, Greg was just talking about how intelligent the CRM is, um, you know, so it knows who to reach out to, when to reach out to them, that sort of thing. Um, one of my favorite features of that is to go a little step further instead of just segmenting a list and, and targeting them as the site really works for us. It feels, like I said earlier, like a team member for us. It's like, the the crm raises its hand and saying hey you know kaylin needs attention she's on the site now and registered eight minutes ago not now might be a good time to reach out and say you know thanks for searching or you know welcome to path and post or whatever your greeting is um versus you know deborah's just returned to the site you know, an hour ago um it's been you know six days we've registered two calls uh, trying to reach them now maybe another chance to see if you can get them on the phone yeah you know, or aaron down at the bottom is in your watch category and uh, you know they've looked at this home twice in, in 24 hours it's the third view total and they've been viewing this from multiple locations so they were probably on their laptop at home and then you know hit the road to drive by and pulled it up on their mobile phone as they drove by so you're getting really specific behavior and that's one thing we teach on our team is it's not what the lead says it's what they do because behavior right. is the newest form of communication they're like i'm not ready um, I'm not interested in buying or selling, but yet you've looked at this home twice in 24 hours, the third time total, and you've, you've looked at it from two different locations. You're obviously interested whether you, what you told me on the phone is true or not. This home has your interest. And so Boomtown just surfaces those opportunities for you natively as part of the technology. It's like, hey, there's high interest being shown by Aaron, regardless of what Aaron's saying on the phone. 
It's, uh, it's also the secret to this is you've got to listen to what the computer's telling you to do and do it, right? CRMs are only as good as what you will do based on what it tells you to do, correct? Yeah, yeah you know, honestly, this now, they call it the now bar in the Boomtown, and it's probably my favorite feature. I've been, we've played the now, we've got the now bar game, we've got a lot of different things that we do, um, but it's like playing poker with the cards face up on the table. If you really want to know, like I remember looking at my now bar yesterday, one of my past clients who was like five years ago, um, I got a now bar notification that he was on the site and searched 73 times in the last 24 wow. hours. Wow. Um, personal friend of mine, but there is a, never a better opportunity to talk about coming in and doing a yearly market review, figuring out what his current home is worth, trying to figure out if he is maybe looking for a house. You don't need to be sneaky about it. There's a lot of different ways you can play it. I can give you an example. One of my new agents who's been with us for 18 months, his first six months, he, he you know, I think he had like 23 transactions, pretty decent first six months. His full 2020, he's at 53 transactions. But what he did is exactly what we told him to do. It just took a long time of consistently doing the behaviors of, we call it setting tip-ups. If you ever heard of ice fishing, I know there's a lot of areas in California and in Atlanta program of ice, but we call it ice fishing. And we set, we, you know, setting tip-ups so that when the fish hits it, and they may not hit, and you got to be okay with that. There may be times where we work the now bar and we contact 30 people individually. This isn't a bulk communication, but actually relevant to the specific property that person reached out to. They may not respond to us but i'm telling you if you set enough tip-ups eventually the tip-ups are hitting and if you consistently keep those actions going by playing the now bar game and and things that's where you know a brand new agent who out of the 50 plus deals two of them were from referrals he's been kind of adverse to reaching out to his sphere but he's helping us convert our company opportunities so two out of 54 deals are from the company so he's helping us convert these but he's been doing it consistently People are like, what's 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 this guy doing? He's doing what we told him to do consistently. We have people on our team that want to do it for two, three weeks and think it's just going to start spitting out gold. It doesn't work that way. You know, I love that you made it a game too. You made it more fun. I mean, oh, sales should be fun. If you don't love sales, why are you in real estate? Like, you gotta love this stuff. You gotta love talking to people. You gotta love supporting them, teaching them what they need to learn about, or supporting them when they have a question right if you're not into that then what is the point this helps you do that better and makes it more fun so be it yeah and and a smart crm uh will will change the conversation and i'll pick aaron as an example on the screen too um without the intelligence crm you just got aaron's contact information in a crm you're going to call aaron and it's going to sound something like are you interested in buying or selling real estate like every other sales right. pitch sounds like versus uh with boomtown that conversation says hey aaron my crm notified me that you're interested in 1180 harbor view would you like to go see that this weekend like it's much more relevant and specific versus are you interested in buying selling real estate so would you be right at two o'clock tomorrow to somebody else would you like to see it at three yeah exactly even better right <laughs> don't forget yes. like the dynamic retargeting that we were talking about on, on facebook instagram could be the gasoline that actually got them to come back into the site. They may have actually saw that property initially through the dynamic retargeting that's working behind the scenes for you, providing mm -hmm. relevant content that brings in Erin. And then, yeah, and maybe Erin, we haven't talked to her in three months because she's in the, you know, she's in the waiting game. And now all of a sudden we can strike when it's, and you'll be, you'll be shocked when they see your face and email, they see you on the Facebook, they see you, you got that mind share. When they first, when they first registered, they may be a little standoffish. But if you've been mailing them for six months, two years, a year, and you call them, they know you. They think they know you. Even if yeah. you're just sending them alerts and you're staying relevant, they may actually be more apt to talking to you. Well, you know, Greg, you, were, you talked about like someone that's a little hesitant to just call their sphere and sort of cold call, right? That's in effect what it would be. Yeah. I would think this is a lot easier because I've got something to talk about. It's I'm answering a question as opposed to going, like you said, I'm an agent. Would you want to buy or sell from me? Like, who cares that nobody that's not relevant but this to me seems easier and here's the other thing that i love about crm so if i've got you know back to peter's question let's say i've got 250 people in my sphere mm. which which of the 250 should i call today yeah how do well, i prioritize that you just yeah. do, right so i i would adopt them i would figure out with using rpr i would figure out when they closed on their last home i would have mm -hmm. their home address and i would try to give them a yearly market review 
even if I adopt them, if they worked with a different agent, I would want to adopt them. Now, this is like, this is true database, like taking it to the next level and trying to build a system around adopting more people into your, you know, your past client sphere. But you can do it based on close dates. So if you have the close dates from RPR, you can plug it in there for your sphere. Your data bank is only as strong as the information in it. So if somebody closed last, you know, in 2015 in June, be like, hey, it's been a year since, you know, five years since you bought your home. Are you curious about the value and your equity position and offer like a yearly market review? We know percentage wise based on some good books and, you know, over 43% of people are either going to refer you another opportunity or they will do business with you. So if you can go That's provide fun. value, not, not go there to list the house. You get right. in front of them on the belly and you can figure out the whole Ford what their dreams are that's that unlocks when you need to follow up with them to truly sell their house but you never know you and, might and for those who don't know what rpr is um that's that stands for realtors property resource and i believe just about every association or mls in the country has access to that now and it will cost you nothing mm -hmm. and there's great ways to customize that for your brokerage and or for your individual agent you can even set up sort of like small medium large reports for the person that really wants to go deep on a market versus one that just wants a quick cut and all of and that is free it doesn't cost you one dollar yeah and once you have the address in boomtown it's one click it's integrated inside of boomtown so you can click over and sometimes you'll like validate your 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 past clients and realize oh crap they just sold their house three months ago with someone else mm. by clicking on rpr and you see it instantly like oh no all of us have had those moments even the ones that do a great job well, my goal is to have less things fall through the cracks. But. Right. Well, that's great that it's integrated too. It makes it a lot easier. So another another value for Boomtown is they take those other valuable external tools and make it easy for you to manage them. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And as you're working that blueprint, like whether it's you know Greg's adoption plan or or your custom blueprint, you need the CRM to help keep you on track, and and you want it. You want it to be a smart CRM. Um, so if you're working a drip plan and you're doing this annual follow-up campaign or whatever it may be, an SOI type of campaign is this example here, you want it to be able to pause um, at the right time. So it's not automatically sending out a communication when you just talk to them on the phone or you just personally send them a, a text. You don't want to overstep yourself. And with a lot of CRMs, there's a lot of risk with that, right? Um, you can you can trip over yourself and make yourself look bad. Um, so you want to make sure that the CRM has these uh, event triggers that you can turn on and off. Um, so a lot of these will set up a campaign. SOI is a good example. Um, as a Peter who had the 250 in his database, like we would put them on a keep in touch plan, but if they um, ever wrote back, we'd automatically pause that. You know, so if they you know respond or we log the call and talk to them, it would pause that campaign so that we can decide whether we want to turn it back on or not, or adjust it and put them on some other drip campaign. So you want to make sure that the CRM is intelligent enough where you can you know, kind of fine tune the levers to make sure that you're not looking like an idiot. There's a great smart, there's a library embedded into Boomtown, which actually scores the best drip campaigns that have already been created, and then you can customize from there. So don't feel overwhelmed if you're like, oh my gosh, I got to create a drip plan. I'm telling you, there's a ton of those drip plans that are in there, plus the sharing library. And there's and there's text messages, emails, and ones that I love are tasks. So imagine you have somebody who closes on their house and your closing coordinator or your agent turns on the closing drip campaign. We have a 10 year plan where we know every single year when to follow up with them based on the anniversary of their home. Or we could use that to send them a card in the mail, or we can use that to send them a text or you know a wide variety of things. Are we perfect at it all the time? No. But I'm tell you, if we could get perfect at it all the time, our um, past client and referral business would go through the roof. Mm -hmm. Out of the 417 transactions last year, 51% of them came from our past client sphere. Everyone thinks of these tools wow. as, um, you know, lead generation. Everybody gets so hooked on this this fire hose of leads, but they forget the most valuable things. And the foundation of the company is run through Boomtown with your mm -hmm. past client sphere opportunities. Do you agree, right, Brad? It's a lot less expensive to keep a client than it is to get a new one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's way better to work your existing contacts in real estate. Now, 51% is a great number. I think we're right at 47%, Greg. So that, you know, around half our business is coming from 
uh, past clients in Sphere. Um, but in order for it to get to be that kind of a higher percentage, you have to have a CRM that, that kind of helps you manage that program. Otherwise, you know, your spreadsheet or your sticky notes, or if you're going to be overwhelmed, you're going to suck at it. And then you're, then you have no choice but to buy new leads. And that's, that's a terrible game to play if that's your um, only way to be. Yeah. And what I love what I'm hearing from both of you guys is that, again, this is, it's a system, it's a process, it works. But it doesn't happen, you know, like you say, you don't just op open the system and dollar bills fall on your pocket. It doesn't work like that. But it sounds like what you're telling me is that Boomtown is really there for you. Again, if you're not a marketing expert, you're not a direct marketing genius, it's you're a salesperson that just loves to sell real estate. This, they help you figure this stuff out so you don't have to become the marketing genius all on your own. Yeah, they, they help in a couple of uh, ways. Not only do they have these kind of blueprints and, and templates and frameworks in place and, and great coaching, but but you can even see from a reporting standpoint kind of where you're benchmarking. So mm -hmm. we, we use Boomtown and, you know, say like, hey, you're in the 88th percentile of all teams like yours in the country on the platform. Uh -huh. So So you get an idea like, how am I doing in context to other agents or teams like mine? across the country am i good or am i bad am i green or am i red am i succeeding or failing so you get these kind of tools built into the system to let you know whether you're doing a good job that's at like the whole team level but you also can get down to like at the agent level greg wow. how are you let's check in you're number three out of your 15 users on your platform greg why aren't you number one <laughs> trying to manage and coach everybody else too so i'm, I'm pretty proud of being number three right <laughs> <That's> awesome, <man. laughs> No competition, Greg, but you know, with next time we talk to you, we want you to be number one. Just saying. <laughs> I'll get there. Hold on, I gotta get the belt. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, kind of along with like the lines of I know this is kind of hard <laughs> to but so I actually have this is uh the connect commander. So this is a belt, and you know, kind of talking about this accountability metrics and stuff, Boomtown is able to like rank everybody, but we kind of take it one step further because we really believe in gamification, healthy competition. Mm -hmm. And we've been using a tool that actually works and connects directly to Boomtown. And that's called Sisu. Imagine like your transaction uh, tracker basically on ster steroids where okay. you can access it on your mobile phone. You can access it anywhere to track your activities. So when you log a phone call in Boomtown, it's automatically being logged in the system. So the great reason that we love Sisu is we don't have to necessarily be in Sisu all of our activities in boomtown and then when other people on our team see that other people are logging the correct activities it's a lot easier for us to praise the people at the top to get the people from the bottom to move down to move up my when i was a poor leader i was always trying to get down on the people on the bottom and it's just not a fun way or not really an inspiring way to lead people so now it's always about praising the people at the top to get the people at the bottom to rise up a little bit and then when they do that, it pushes everybody else. But yeah, we're tracking, you know, we have competitions to win um, seats to Boomtown Unite or other conferences around the country. We, you know, give raffle tickets on a monthly basis based on performance on three key, key performance indicators. You know, who has the most pending? We have the po pending powerhouse belt and they get raffle tickets in to, to win and they can pick which trip they want to go on. And then we have, you know, um, Connect Commander is the actual talk to prospect. So who's talked to the most people in the CRM and all they have to do is log it in the system. And then we have um, the appointment calendar, which is the, who has the most appointments set. So those are the key performance indicators. And we have, you know, TV screens. When you walk down our hallway, you see the, the thing switching between competitions. So everyone knows where they're at kind of subliminally so that, that's so cool so you're rewarding positive sales activity not just the net net result because the positive activity is what leads to the positive net result right it's a lot more it's fun a daily it. process but all the time I, I love that it's great resets every month so like who was the leader last month you know like to think that we call drago magic mike on there he's you can see he's the top um, and I'm in number three spot, but in, and we have fun with it. Like we, we call him Drago. I mean, he's, he's got a picture from, you know, Rocky on there. So, I mean, Ben's got a picture of one of our other agents as a kid, you know, like it's a fun gamification, like culture camaraderie tool, you know, 
it's hard to explain it all together, but it, it's it's been a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah, it just makes it more fun. Like every, it's not you're not like you know you hear the drudgery of the annual you know award ceremony, and there's the one top producer that wins no matter what happens, and blah, after a while that top producer's happy and everyone else is mad. But nope. this way you're rewarding everybody who's trying hard, right? It's great. It's crazy because Ben Boutnick on the right in the green who had 11 monthly under contracts, started with us in 2019 in February. Wow. Uh, is awesome. pending, like he put 11 deals pending in that month, in a 30 day time period. He has 15 closings to September. Wow. I, we're all about helping people build their past client database by providing them really good quality opportunities. Thanks to Boomtown being able to, you know, push lead opportunities into us based on areas that we want to serve and letting the digital team actually do the work behind the scenes so that I can focus on holding them accountable and creating these, you know, culture boosters and competitions, you know? Yeah, it's, that's a great point, Greg. That's one thing, if you are looking to grow a team or expand beyond where you're at and add more um, team members, agents to, to your group, Boomtown's fantastic. Once you've built all this, all this customization that we poured years into and constantly fine tuning, it's there whether you add one more or 10 more agents into the mix. So all of a sudden these agents aren't starting from zero trying to catch up with that top producer. They literally step in and succeed from day one. And that's the beauty of a, a good CRM that can help scale your processes. So that someone cool thing, has to start from zero. And the cool thing is obviously we're team leaders. We, we, I have 10 agents, he's got, how many agents do you have right now? We have 24. 24. There are different levels of Boomtown. If you're a single agent on the call right now, don't think you need to run a team. If you don't have aspirations to run a team, they have th like three different versions that you mm -hmm. can fit in. You can uh, you could start at the first version and eventually get to the second version and then be like, oh my gosh, this is really working because I'm mm -hmm. doing consistent and then upgrade to the next option. So don't think that I, I, we are two big team leaders who try to train people, but it's not just for that. If I was a sole agent, I would want to work in Boomtown. Yeah, 100%. I have a lot of friends that are sole agents that love it, so I, I agree with you. I, I'm i interviewing an agent right now who wants to join my team, and she says, because I want to use Boomtown. She, wow. she, had, it, she had it with a broker in the past, and as, you know, years have gone by, she's moved on, and she's like, I really want to get back to Boomtown. So talk about attracting agents as well. They know that you know it's a top platform, and she also knows we've customized it really well. But it can be an attractor as well. Yeah, I think that's one thing that brokers may forget sometimes is you, that these kinds of tools can be recruiting and retention tools. It's not just about the productivity you create, but it's about selling your brand as well. Yeah, yeah, a good CRM does all of the above, um, whether you're solo agent or or big broker or any, anywhere in between. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. So, Brad, where do we go from here? Any other co comments you guys want to share? We're at, we're at the top of the hour. Yeah, I know. I was just looking at my clock there. Um, I think we can wrap up here unless you have some questions from the audience or any other yeah, thoughts. Is there, any, uh, is there a slide that shows where people can reach out? Because we're getting people are asking, how do I learn more? Is there a slide oh. that does that? I, I don't have that slide. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, well, hey, I just added posted in the I chatted to everybody. Okay, got oh. it. So if you open up the little box that says chat down there from Stacy Finnegan, you'll see um go so you go to boomtownroi.com and there'll be lots more information for you how to learn how to do this as a single agent, as a smaller team, as a full-on brokerage, the larger brokerage. It, it, Boomtown is, is here to help any level succeed and I wanted to go back to one thing you said because I, uh, a few months ago, I actually interviewed Greer Aaron, Ellen, the owner of Boomtown, and he is a, a practitioner in his heart. He was and, and I think still thinks of himself that way. And I do think it's one of the secret sauces of Boomtown. There's technologies out there that just see real estate. Oh, there's 1.3 million realtors. I want to go after it. And they're, they're tech people and they've never sold a lick of real estate. They don't understand it. They just want to make money from you guys. Right. Greer is really impact driven he wants to just as you said brad he wants to help you guys be successful and that's why i think the tool continues to evolve and continues to get smarter because he really listens and not he his whole team but he's the leader obviously 
um, listens intently to to folks like Greg and Brad that come to him with suggestions and say, you know, this is working really great. I would love it if it would do blank and blank. And he continues to evolve the tool to do that because again, he really, really wants to see you guys succeed. He has as much agents in his heart and brokers in his heart, just like you guys have your clients in your heart. And it's really cool to watch and it's rare in real estate, to be honest. So I, I love it. I think it's great. It is. And you said it exactly right. I mean, real estate, especially those last few years, it has attracted so much big money, um, whether it's capital or, or companies going public, uh, big tech firms coming in, trying to disrupt the industry. I mean, how is a solo agent or a boutique brokerage or a team leader or even a large uh, broker on a franchise? How are they going to compete with the hundreds of millions or billions of dollars that these new tech startups have raised to to go and build software, they can't. They, so we have to have someone in the industry that's really helping do it for us. And that's what Boomtown's doing, that's what Greer's doing. He's like, you know, these agents need a way to compete with this big tech money. And the answer's Boomtown. Yeah, there's a lot of people generating a lot of opportunities, wanting to take bigger pieces of the pie constantly. You look at your, your ZRT, you know, your Zillow Realtor, you know, those type of opportunities, they're looking at models where they could be changing. And I'll tell you right now, you better have a game plan and have a CRM that supports you by providing quality information and running your business and having a game plan for your sphere, your past clients. Otherwise, they're going to be sold back to you at a, a pretty big percentage. And I know um, yep. Greer is I'm, the dynamic retargeting. I, I'll never forget the times being in the Dewberry Hotel saying like, hey, we really need this technology. And within two and a half months, it was it was ready to go, which is shows you how committed they are to yeah. improving it for the agent. So exactly, now, you know, Boomtown, they're one of the largest. And you know, sometimes you say, well, how does someone get to be largest? Do they just power their way through, or do they just spend their way through it? And I think what I'm hearing from you guys is no, they serviced and built a product that works. That's why they're one of the biggest out there, one of the most well-trusted. Would you guys agree? Yeah, I agree. They do it just like agents do it. You know, relationship, build a sphere, and word of mouth. They know, you know, like, and trust them. And they're our business partners now. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, again, if, if you guys want to learn more about them, um, it's Boomtown, B-O-O-M-T-O-W-N-R-O-I.com. Go over there and uh, there's lots of great uh, you know, support and sales folks that can help you learn more about this and see if it makes sense for you. But with that, I wanted to thank Greg and, uh, Brad and Greg, Greg? <laughs> Brad and Greg. Um, you guys have obviously have passion for this and it's great to see your businesses um, with partnerships like Boontown doing so well. It does my heart good. After all of us, you know, March and April, when we were all like, oh my gosh, what is this going to mean to see you guys, you know, working hard, servicing your customers, staying in touch with them, and that it's working and that real estate's holding up, you know, who knows how long it's going to last, but right now we're doing good. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today and your, your expertise and your passion because it's, it's, in, you know, it's, um, it's what's the word? It's infectious. And oh, by the way, Greg, I want to figure out how I win one of those big buckles, those big belts. Those are really cool. So we'll talk afterwards. Exactly. Thanks, Marilyn. Okay, everybody. Thank you. thank you so much. Have a great day. Uh, we will be sending this recording out. Um, it'll be on the RE Technologies YouTube channel, and we'll be sending you an email. So feel free to forward this if you think it's interesting, and there may be other folks on your teams or, or colleagues that can benefit. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks, man. Thank you.